All right, in continuing our logo project, it is due today, so we want to make sure we have our finished versions. I'm going to open up my assignment four files, and I'm going to find, I'm just going to start right back with my vector.com file. So if I go to the home page of it, right, I can continue working. And I want to see this file as completely as possible. And I want to unlock layers. And I want to turn off my sketch. But only have showing what I want to have showing and leave them unlocked. This is why I want you to be able to select it all and move it and have it all move the way you like. And then you can also hold down Option and grow it without distorting it to look kind of good on the what's called the artboard, this white space in Vector.com. Because when you save it as an SVG, that will kind of maximize the space. But that is my black shape vector, right? So I zoom in really close. This is Vector.com. There could, might be little things that could be improved, but no matter how much I zoom in, it's always going to be clean because it's a vector, right? If I double click on anything, you'll see the anchor points. So now the next thing I do is I need to export it as an SVG, download that. doesn't matter what the pixel dimensions are because an SVG is a scalable vector graphic format, so it's not based on pixels. And I'm going to go to my downloads, drag that onto my desktop, and then save it with a name. So I've done this already, and I saved it as an SVG, but that was just page one, page one, right? So what I want to do now is make it clear what this is. And this is my portable vector format file, scalable vector. If I double click it, it will open in a in the vector program that's on this computer, which is Adobe Illustrator. And so to rename it, I just slowly double click on the, the, the name and I'm going to name it with my name. And then assignment four and then black shape logo. And now I have an SVG file I can add to my folder. Problem is an SVG file is not an online file format. I can't put that on the canvas and I can't print easily with that. So what I need to do is I need to rasterize it, but I need to rasterize it at the right size. And that's also where I'm going to add color. So I can close vector.com now and open up our old familiar raster program, PhotoP. But if you remember from doing exercise two in the vectors, the vector uh, emojis, you can support vectors in PhotoP. You just can't save them as vectors. So we've already saved our vector. We have our vector. Now what we need to do is we need to manipulate it in PhotoP. And this is just one way to do it, but it's a lot, a lot more direct and more functionally professional as a workflow to do it this way than to color it separately in a vector file. So, what do I do? I do not drag this SVG and open it in PhotoP. Because if I do it, what it does is for each vector, it gives me an individual smart object for it, which can be useful depending on what you're doing, but it's a little complicated, right? Makes it really hard to color, it makes it hard to work with. And it just rasterized it without ever asking me how to rasterize it. It actually didn't rasterize it, Let's strike that, because these are all smart objects, but it's showing it to me at a dimension that it never asked me about. So if I turn my rulers on with com Command-R, it's a 1602 by 1681, right? But the whole point of a smart object is it can be made to be any scale. So I am not going to open it that way. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a new file, and this is going to be true for all of your print-ready files. 
I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to name this the same thing I named my SVG. I can just copy it. And I'm going to make it 8 inches. This will sound familiar. 8 inches by 10 inches at standard lab resolution, which is 350. 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. Make sure it's inches, not pixels. Then say create. And then you should see with your rulers turned on that that translates to 2800 pixels by 3500 pixels. You want to have a lot of pixels, you know, well more than a thousand. Now I drag and drop my SVG onto it. And now that SVG, because I didn't open it with PhotoP, instead I dragged and dropped it into a pixel space. It comes in as a smart object. And because SVGs code in what's called the artboard, even though it's empty space, this matches how it looked in vector.com. So already that looks pretty good on the page, but at this stage I can hold down option and shift, actually not shift, just option. <laughs> Let me do it again. And I can size it to look good on the paper. So what I want you to imagine is that that black space is your map. So this black space is your mat. This white space is the opening in the mat showing white paper. And you're deciding how to make your logo look good within that space. So if you hold down option, you can shrink it towards the center. You want to give it, you want to give it plenty of space. I might even offset mine a little bit. Because even though the mats you buy say they're eight by 10, they're actually seven and a half inches by nine and a half inches. They build in a quarter inch overlap on each side. All right. So then I hit return. This is my black logo. I save this. How do I save it? First, I save it as a PSD because that PSD will keep the smart object layer in there. Save it to the desktop. And then I can hit function F11 to check that it's there. And I mark that as green. That's my working format. Next. I'm going to save it by exporting it as a JPEG. And I can do it either as a JPEG or I can turn off the background and save it as a PNG. So I'll maybe do that. Export as a PNG. That will support the transparency as long as I have the background turned off. That's going to go to Canvas. So that I make orange. But that goes to Downloads. And so then I drag that to the desktop and then mark it orange. Now, what if I want to print this? This is the new part. Now what I need to do is I need to flatten it. Layer. It's the right size. It's the right resolution, but now I need to flatten it. And then I need to say file export as more. And this is going to be a TIFF, a TIFF file. And I'm going to put in front of the name capital P and capital R and then a dash for print ready. Then I'm going to save that. Now this is what's called my flattened TIFF file. This is my archive format. This is for printing. This is the one I put into my class Dropbox. It downloaded here. That's a TIFF. I drag it to my desktop and I mark it as purple. So we have three types here. Once we've moved our vector SVG logo into PhotoP, we save it as a PSD once we have it sized. That keeps our layers. We're going to return to that when we add color. We, we either uh, save it as a JPEG and flatten it with a white background, or we turn off the background, save it as a PNG, which I prefer because then it's free floating. And we save that, and that's going to go to Canvas. And then we flatten it and we save it as a TIFF. And the TIFF is what's called a lossless compression archive format, which will rasterize it, but keep it at that resolution that we set, which is perfect for printing. 
And that we're going to put into the class Dropbox. How do you get to the class Dropbox? You go to the Canvas, you go to the home page, you go to Links, and then you scroll down to Dropbox, and that will take you to this Dropbox class file, where you're going to click on the first folder, Digital Art Class Files, then the first folder again, Flatten TIFF Files to Print, and what goes into the Flatten TIFF Files to Print? That's where your Flatten TIFF Files are going to go. You scroll down to the bottom of it, you're going to see Instructions, for how to make a print ready. And you don't want to put things anywhere other than your folder, right? So you find your folder and then you put stuff into it, right? I have too much in my folder, but. So Brie, that's where you drag and drop your print ready files. They need to be flat and they need to be print ready. If you ever need a reminder of how to do that, I have a little PDF at the end that tells you how to make them print ready. So I'm going to add mine in to my folder that's already too full just by dragging and dropping. But which one do I do? I do the, the TIFF, the print ready TIFF. It uploads it in no time. There it is, right there. Now it's ready to print. Now I want to add color. So I go to Photo P again and I close this because this is my flattened image. And what I do is I open up my PSD, the one I saved. So this is the one I now open in Photo P. That has my layers. Why? Because I'm going to take my vector and I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. And then I'm going to double click next to the name of the layer to open up my layer styles. And this is how we're going to color just for our logo. We're going to learn all kinds of ways to work between vector and raster programs and how to color. But this is the easiest way for, to keep consistency with your logo. If I want to color all of it instead of in a black ink, I'm going to click on color overlay and then just choose a color. I did gold last time. Let's do something in dramatic kind of bloody red. So that's it in maroon. That is a color logo. I don't need to do anything more than that. But if I want to, I can play with the opacity of that color overlay and I can add things underneath like a gradient like I did last time. I can change that gradient. I can totally customize it. I can use one of the defaults. I can play with these settings. That one's kind of interesting. And I can play with the angle of it and the scale. And I can play with the opacity and even the blending mode. If I want to dissolve it, this will give me some what's called diffusion texture in the coloring. And that's just filling the color. Now, that might look good, but that looks good on white. And what does a logo need to be? It needs to be clear, engaging, and most of all, versatile. So let's see what it looks like on a black background. So I'm going to now duplicate the white background, Command-J. Then I'm going to say Edit Fill with Black, just to see how it would look on a black background. And there it is. It looks very Dungeons & Dragons-esque. But with the black background, I might think, oh, I need another effect. Maybe I want to put a stroke around it. And maybe I want that stroke to be white. Or maybe I want that stroke to be on the inside. And maybe I want it to be 12 pixels. Okay, now that might make it look better on black, but then if I check it on white, that makes it look a little thin. And if I zoom in, it looks a little awkward, right? Because that stroke has an inside edge and an outside edge. So then I might decide, oh, I want to add a drop shadow. So basically, you can add as many effects, as many variations as you want. But I like the drop shadow. I can customize it. I can play with the angle. I can play with the opacity. I can play with the overall spread and size. I'll make it a little bit soft. 